This tutorial demonstrates a fast and easy way to achieve good edge flow on a face model. The two most important structures on the face are the eyes and the mouth, so we will concentrate on creating good edge flow for those areas first, and the other areas of the face will become subordinate to the eyes and the mouth. Start by creating a plane and positioning it roughly over the face, then dividing it so that one polygon is over the eye and the other polygon is roughly over the muzzle region. Select the polygon over the eye and extrude it, then scale that extruded polygon inward and stretch it to fit roughly over the eye and delete it. Do the same thing with the polygon over the mouth and then delete that extra face that we don't need on the inside and tweak the verts to fit the reference. You can see that already the edge flow is very simple but it's set up to follow rings around the eyes and around the mouth. To create the nose let's cut an edge loop with the split edge ring tool and cut a loop just to the side of the nostril, just below the nostril, and just above the nostril. This will create a polygon from which we can extrude out the nose. Remember, every time you create more geometry, tweak the new verts to match the reference. I cannot even begin to describe how crucial good reference is for modeling a face. The reference images need to be of a high resolution. They need to be aligned in Photoshop to make sure that they're not tilted, or any more misaligned than they absolutely have to be. And don't just start cutting edge loops indiscriminately. Look and see where your model needs more detail and add edge loops accordingly. Then tweak the verts to line up with your reference, going back and forth between adding geometry and lining it up with your reference. You'll have to tweak every vert individually. The human face is so organic and complex that there's no shortcut to achieving a quality model. With the edge flow structure that I created from the very beginning, new loops are very easy to create with the split edge ring tool. And these new loops follow precisely the edge flow that we want to achieve for the entire face. There's no need to take out the split polygon tool and start cutting edges across the grain or in, in strange directions, the edge flow is already set up for you for the most part. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part, uh, the edge flow is already here, perfect and ready to go. Now let's create that nose. Select the face that's directly over where the nose should be and extrude it outwards and tweak those verts till they line up roughly with the nose. And then let's select that polygon underneath the nose and extrude it inwards to create a cavity for the nostril. Smoothing our model periodically can help us see where areas of more detail and refinement need to be built up. Here's one exception to the rule that I was talking about before. We're going to recut the edge flow just a little bit along the center line of the face as to avoid six pointed stars at the center line of the face. Now, these cuts are carefully thought out and they will still result in good edge flow in the end. Here's one little trick that will help you avoid a six-pointed star on the cheekbone. 
extrude out the edges around the jaw and merge the top vert that you create with the vert at the corner of the eye. In order to create the rest of the head, all we have to do is pick the edges around the top of the face and begin extruding them in an arc around the cranium. The last really big structure of the head and neck is the sternomastoid muscle, that muscle that runs from just under your, your ear down to your collarbone and sternum. So I'm going to create a polygon that follows the shape of that muscle first, and then extrude out the rest of the edges on the neck subordinate to that flow. Everything that I'm modeling for this tutorial is to help you understand how to model a general human face. So I'm not going to go into depth with anything that's very specific to this reference, uh, like his turkey neck and, and some of the extreme wrinkles on his face, um, because I just want this tutorial to be about modeling a general human head, uh, giving you the basics so that when you model, you can put in all those extra details that are specific to the character that you are modeling. From here on out, it's pretty much a process of observation, really looking at your reference then comparing it to your model, seeing where it needs improvement and tweaking, and going back and looking for more things to fix.